We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all, all united. united. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me well. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Bruna. And Hi. welcome to those who are online. I am here in, uh, on site and some of us are in the room. So yes, we can hear you. Welcome. Thank you so much, Nena. And welcome everyone to this session. Um, we're just going to wait a few seconds for Shital, my, my co-coordinator, IGC co-coordinator. She's having a, uh, some issues with her link. And apparently the website is down again. So um, while, she, while she joins us, um, this again is one of the sessions of um, the Internet Governance Calculus, which is a civil society group that has been along um, for a long time right now. And we have a short agenda for our event today. Um, and the idea, and, and even, um, the idea is to discuss some issues that have been really relevant for us in this past year and, um, and hence the reason of the name as well, um, Internet Governance in Times of Crisis. But um, we do wanna use this um, meeting as an opportunity for everyone to chime in and for everyone to join um, some parts of our agenda, which I'm also posting on the chat, but I, as, as I post it, um, Yes, Shiva. Um, Shital is not is not able to use her link because you logged in um, from the one she she accidentally shared. So that's that's pretty much it. Um, but I'm I'm posting our agenda on the chat right now. Um, yes, I am Nena. Just one second. Um, Yeah, we're gonna start with some introductions and um, agenda or aims of the pre-event, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, our goal for today was to um, facilitate this conversation on two of the main topics we have all been engaged in the past years. Um, the first one is the Global Digital Contact Compact, um, and that I guess, Nena, we're gonna count with some of your help on explaining and facilitating the talk as well. Um, and um, our idea with the civil digital, the global digital compact is to hear um, from all of you, what do you think about the compact idea? Do you think civil society should engage and how should we be um, considering our engagement um, for this, um, for this uh, upcoming days? And um, one, second, um, one second point we wanted to discuss with you, was also um, the debate about um, the engagement with the TAC Envoy office. Um, so we just also, also here, we listed it as a process slash consultation and slash engagement with the TAC Envoy office so far. And um, what do you, does the organizations represented here today expect um, going forward? Um, and let me see if we have anything. We do have something else. Um, and yeah, um, just like we we had a, a third moment just for us to go through some other topics, if anyone would wish to, like we, some of the things we discussed were the possibility of discuss or of, of debating um, connection, other, the other second topic was internet fragmentation, data protection, or human rights online, all very um, general and kind of high level, but like we really wanted this to be a space for everyone to be part of. So um, th this third part of the session will be kind of free for everyone to present topics and ideas on whatever they wish um, they can. Um, I'm just checking in with Chital if she managed to, to get in. I don't think so. <laughs> but um, maybe we can, what we can do is maybe start with a round of presentations um, to all of you on site and to some of us um, here online, 
I see Jim, I see Barry, I see Raymond, Ategeka, Veronica, and Siva, um, and Nena on the online room, but I cannot see, fully see who is on the, the on-site um, room, which I was also supposed to be at, but um, I guess we can start with some short presentation, just name and organization, maybe. Does anyone wants to start? Can I nominate you, Nena? Hello, everyone. So I'm online and on site. My name is Nena. I come from the internet. I'm the chief web advocate at the World Wide Web Foundation. And I'm also helping to coordinate the civil society engagement with the Tech and Voice Office and digital corporation as a whole. And I'm hoping that since I'm online and on site, if there is any, I have to play the, in the connectivity link. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, hello. My name is Courtney Raj. Uh, I am an independent scholar, journalist, and advocate. I work with the our, uh, International Human Rights Organization, Article 19, as their U.S. and tech policy strategist, and the Global Media, uh, sorry, the Global Fund for Media Development as their tech advisor, and a bunch of different organizations really at the intersection of media, technology, and human rights. And so. Um, I'm also on the multi-stakeholder advisory group representing civil society. So excited to be here and discuss uh, the issues today. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Judith Hellerstein. Um, happy to be here. I work with many different other civil society groups, among them the accessibility uh, special interest groups, the last standing group, which is a project of ISAC New York. Um, and I'm also with uh, the Di IGF Dynamic Coalition on Access Stability, as well as the uh, uh, member in the steering group of the IGF USA, along with Courtney. Um, and I wear other hats where I help on ICT regulators and policies, working with policies on universal access and digital development. Yes, uh, my name is Wizom Donko, uh, a member of NCSG, NCUC, and then a GNSO Council member. Good to see you, Wisdom, under your mask. Yeah. Uh, Milton Mueller, I'm uh, a professor at the Georgia Institute of Technology and um, uh, director of the Internet Governance Project, which is at the School of Public Policy at uh, Georgia Tech and a long time uh, IGC member. Great, um, is that everyone that, that's on site? Um, can we go on with the, the online um, attendees? Uh, I don't know who wants to start, Siva, Raymond, um, Jim, or- so I, just, I just have a small question. I have Seattle here, finally. Yes, I'm here. I'm here, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay. okay. Um, well, I'm, I'm happy to go. It's so great to see you there in person, those who have just uh, introduced themselves. Um, it, it does feel like a different era, like properly now, um, doing this hybrid. Um, so... Nice to see you all. Um, I'm Sheetal Kumar and I am one of the co-conveners of the IGC along with Bruna, uh, who is also here. And I am, what I'm not wearing that uh, hat, uh, Head of Global Engagement and Advocacy at GPD. Um, so I, I oversee our, um, all of our advocacy and work across the different um, areas, uh, policy areas in which we engage. Don't want to, um, uh, do too much, uh, take up too much time with my interest. I'm going to move on to Bruna, perhaps. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, just on a short um, introduction note, my I'm Bruna Santos, yes, one of the other co-coordinators of IGC and um, now a German Chancellor Fellow um, with um, the Berlin Social Science Center um, and yeah, just working on um, internet governance and also platform regulation issues. And yeah, long time fan of IGC and IGF. So happy to see you all here and have to see some friendly faces as well. 
Bruna, do you want to do it so that we pass on? So if you want to pass on to somebody else. Yes, of course. Um, I guess we can go with Veronica. Hi, Bruna. Hi, everyone. Hope you can hear me or see me. I was struggling a bit with the phone, so I hope you can hear me now. Um, my name is Veronica Ferrari. I am in Buenos Aires. Um, I work with APC, the Association for Progressive Communications. I do global policy advocacy at APC. And APC has been engaging in a lot of the processes we'll be discussing about. And maybe some other colleagues are more engaged in those processes, but, but happy to be here and discussing with you all. Thanks, Bruno. Back to you. Yes. Um, should we go with Raymond then? Hi, Raymond Momata here from Accra, Ghana. I'm here as um, a co-host for this session. I'm volunteering for the IGF for this particular session as a co-host. Aside that, I'm from Accra, Ghana, and I'm the founder and president of e-governance and internet governance foundation for Africa. It's a civil society that engages in internet governance and e-governance activity among others. I'm also one of the African representatives to ICANN ALAC. I'm part of the NCSG, NCUC and MPOC within ICANN as well. Thank you. Yes, um, is any of our other colleagues who are joining online who want to, meaning to present themselves? Um, I still see some names here, but, um, but yeah, if you, if you wanna do this on the chat, we, we can also read um, your presentations, but I see Ategeka open her mic, so maybe, yes. Okay, thank you so much. My name is Frank Ategeka and I'm from Uganda. And I work for um, a youth-led organization focused on um, health, digital rights, and economic rights for vulnerable persons, and specifically refugees. I'm also a current Open Internet Fellow with uh, the NDI and SIP program. And uh, I've been a Global Health Fellow 2018-2019 um, for the Global Health ACO Fellowship program in Uganda. And I'm happy to be here. I'm putting more details about my organization uh, in the chat. Thank you so much. Um, okay, does anybody else who's online want to uh, present or introduce themselves rather? Okay, so, um, well, I can see, maybe I'll, thanks, Atageka, that's great. Or Frank, sorry. Um, hi, nice to meet you, Frank. Thanks for joining. Um, and for introducing yourself. For those who have the video on, maybe um, if that's okay, I will just ask you to introduce yourself because I can see that you're actually there. <laughs> um, and then that, I think that's just Nena. Nena, have you already introduced yourself? I did um, severally, but I also like to express apologies on behalf of Anret Esther Hussein. She was here, but she has a calendar class. So she said to please, um, uh, um, Anret is the current MAG chair and also from civil society. She said to extend her apologies. Thanks so much, Nana. And um, I think what we'll do is we'll get started. Um, Bruna had shared the agenda, um, and so Nena, you suggested that we have uh, a doc um, that we can all access with the notes and the agenda. So we'll send that in the chat shortly. The aim of this event um, is really to bring us together as representatives of civil society organizations um, and to share information and to discuss a way forward. And what we thought would be useful is to identify some key processes that are relevant um, to what we're generally working on to the UN, 
to the IGF and to digital technologies um, and to discuss those in particular detail as there's so much we could discuss. So I shared on the IGC list the suggestion that we discuss uh, the Global Digital Compact in particular. So um, that's what we uh, have suggested and we didn't receive any um, negative feedback to that suggestion. We only received positive feedback and a suggestion that we go into more detail as to the context of the roadmap and civil society engagement and the links with the digital compact and um, the IGF. So I hope that that is clear. Um, but Bruno, did you want to add anything to that? No, Chital, thank you so much, but nothing else to add. I'm, I'm just finalizing a, an open doc of our agenda just so everyone can follow it through, which I'm probably going to take um, live notes at as well, just so you know. OK, thanks so much. So in terms of housekeeping, before we get um, started on the substance of our discussion, I haven't uh, facilitated a hybrid event before. So, and Bruna, I don't know whether you have. <laughs> okay. So this is I, new. Please I be patient have. with us. Okay. Nana, do you have any suggestions on how we take in input? Because normally there's a hand raise if you're virtual, but if you're um, in person there, how do you signify to, um, uh, signal to us rather that you want to take the floor? It is the same function. You will raise okay. your hand uh, ju just so everyone can be on the same page. There are people who are on site only. There are people who are online only. There is at least one person who is in both places. That person is called Nena. Our moderator is Sheetal. They are co-coordinators that we already know. They're, they're not born today. So what's gonna happen is that if anyone raises a hand here in the room, I'm going to signal that in the chat so our moderator sees that. And then when you raise your hand online, Shital will see that as well. Shital, if there is something you can see, please let me know in the chat because I've got my eyes on both ways, especially unless when I'm speaking, then I have to concentrate on the content of my speech. Thank you. Okay, that's clear to me. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, do feel free to put them in the chat. Um, but we will proceed then with uh, the agenda. And the first thing is that we wanted to give a bit of background to the engagement of civil society in the process uh, that is linked to the Global Digital Compact and how it fits in which is actually something that you suggested, um, Nana. So I'm just going to briefly share what I know and can share. And then Bruna, please do, I'll come over to you if that's okay. And then open up in case I've missed anything. Um, but just to make clear that as a network, as IGC and broader networks, civil society groups have inputted to what was the predecessor or the sort of the, the beginning of this whole um, process that led uh, and that is linked to the Global Digital Compact, which is part of the um, Secretary General's Our Common Agenda. And that it's so it started with um, the high level panel um, on digital cooperation that was set up by the, the SG um, in, I believe it was 2018, um, to discuss uh, the issue of digital cooperation and to make recommendations on how to improve it and on the role of the UN. It produced a report um, which um, had recommendations and specific areas, um, that uh, thematic areas, and roundtables were set up to discuss those areas and to remember with outputs. Um, a few of those roundtables were, um, were actively engaged in by civil society groups, including the Human Rights Roundtable, where Access Now was a co-champion, and the Trust and Security Roundtable, um, where I believe the Web Foundation also played a really key role, um, and also um, a, a roundtable on digital inclusion, amongst others. Now, the roundtables have some of them have been quite active, some of them have been less active, some of them have come up with outputs, some of them haven't. 
Um, but now the next stage is, uh, as the SG has launched um, his, the common agenda, um, the next stage is uh, really to, um, to incorporate, I suppose, the work that has already been done um, into the common agenda. And one of the aspects of uh, the common agenda, which is relevant, is the development of a global digital compact, which includes seven different key priority areas or principles um, that will have to be fleshed out over um, the next year. Exactly how, we don't know, but that will come on to that. Um, just to say that as part of the work done on the high level panel, a tech envoy office was set up. Um, the tech envoy position itself hasn't been filled, um, but I understand that it, there, it is very soon, we should expect an announcement about that. Um, the, the original mandate holder was dismissed because of sexual harassment allegations against him. But we are expecting a new one to be filled and the tech envoy will play a key role in their office in the global digital compact development, the consultation process, et cetera. So engaging with that will be key. Now, let me stop there in case I've missed anything in terms of providing the context to the global digital compact, which is what we were hoping to be able to discuss here today. And we've suggested that we discuss. Um, Bruna, uh, Nana, I know you've been actively involved. Anyone else, would you like to come in and add to that context? Well, um, just that like this agenda make this point in our agenda made sense considering all of the engagement civil society has um, dispensed um, this, this past year around um, the tech envoy and um, the high level multi stakeholder body as well. Like um, some of our organizations and groups have been, as you said, to tell following that very closely. So it just makes um, sense for us to be um, debating this right now. And, and I see APC um, and a lot of us is also, are also very active on the debate. So yeah, just, just looking forward to the chat about this. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a continuation of a discussion that we've been having um, since the high level panel was launched. And um, I put in a link to a letter that um, a number of us sent, including the IGC, um, to the office of the tech envoy about um, the, um, the consultations that were held specifically on one aspect of the roadmap. Um, and on the development or the strengthening of the IGF. But this is just one, one way that we've engaged. As I said, we've engaged um, as constituents in the roundtables. We've sent other letters as well. Um, and so it seems that this discussion on the global digital compact and its development is particularly well suited um, for, for this space here uh, at the pre-event for the IGF. Does anybody want to add anything to this context setting before we move into the discussion? Milton, Milton has a hand up, please. I'd, I could add context, but Milton first. Yes, I, I just have a question. Um, what is the purpose or the objective of the Do Di Global Digital Compact? Because you've talked about it, all these processes. I just want to know what, what were they trying to accomplish? I think that's a really good question. And I think if you ask um, other people, Maybe you I might get a different answer. In. But but Nana, you feel free to jump in. And I also have my own understanding I can share. But Nana, go ahead. That's a very important question. Um, and I think that's why we need context. So there was the high level panel on digital cooperation, which was multi stakeholder. It had private sector, it has civil society, it had everyone that held um, consultations over one year. Um, the, the, the secretary was Jovan, that we know of um, Diplo, produced a report called the Age of Interdependence, of, of digital interdependence, making key proposals to the UN Secretary General. On the basis of that report, the UN Secretary General set up uh, working groups that led to what we now know as the roadmap for digital cooperation. 
the Roadmap for Digital Cooperation has eight pillars. One of the pillars being a revitalized, a better functioning internet governance forum. So IGF is one of the eight pillars of the digital cooperation roadmap. There are other seven, we would not worry ourselves with those. In, under the IGF pillar, there are pro pro proposals from working group about how to make the IGF better. There is something called the IGF Plus. There are quite a number of proposals. And one of the proposals of giving to the UN Secretary General was have a multi-stakeholder multi high-level panel of eminent persons to support the, the work that the IGF is doing in driving policy. Now, that's one explanation. On the 75th anniversary of the UN, which was UN, the UNGA, the UN 75, last year, the General Assembly requested of the UN Secretary General a plan for development rebuilding, rebuilding the development world after the pandemic. And they requested that this plan be made ready and submitted by UNGA 76, which was September this year. The UN Secretary General engaged another series of consultations across the UN ecosystem. And that included, of course, the digital cooperation work that is already ongoing. And so on 21st of September, on the opening of UNGA 76 this year, the Secretary General submitted the report called Our Common Agenda. Our common agenda is an action plan in, eight, in 10 points of which if reinforcing digital cooperation is one of those. So one of the key action recommendations of that pillar is having the global community adopt a global digital compact. Let me pause and take that again. The Global Digital Compact is a global drive under the digital cooperation plan of the common agenda. I'll still take that again. The common agenda is a plan for rebuilding after the pandemic. It has 10 pillars. Pillar seven is on digital cooperation. And the main point in that is a global digital compact. Now, if you permit me, the global digital compact has about seven subsets. In other words, these are seven priority actions for rebuilding and improving digital cooperation post pandemic. It includes connecting all people. So the question is, what are the priority things we need to do to connect all people to the internet, including all schools? What do we have to do to avoid internet fragmentation? That's number two. How do we protect data? What is the agreement that we need within a global digital compact framework to avoid, uh, to protect data? How do we introduce accountability criteria to discrimination and misleading content? How do we promote regulation of artificial intelligence? And how do we treat digital commons as a global public good? These seven sub actions are what the UN Secretary General has put forward under the plan now that we call the uh, uh, common agenda. I will close in saying that this common agenda and as for this case, the global digital compact is expected to begin a process that will give us the full digital compact by September, 2023. So it's been, it's in process already. We know what we are aiming at. The question now is what do we want to put into this? 
And what do we want the global UN General Assembly by September 2023 to agree on that is the global digital compact? I hope I've made some sense, but I'm happy to share more. Let me stop so far. Thanks, Bruno. That was really helpful. And I, um, I put a link in the chat to, to share the resolution that was passed um, following a discussion by member states about the common agenda. It doesn't actually mention the digital, global digital compact in um, specifically in any detail, or it doesn't actually mention it, but um, it does um, acknowledge uh, the common agenda. And as is discussed already, the Tech Envoy's office is going to play a key role in coordinating inputs under those seven areas that Nana just mentioned um, in order to inform what will be the development of something more uh, detailed around each of those areas. So um, Milton, does that answer your question? Do you have any follow-up or any reactions? Well, um, those are very ambitious goals. Um, yeah, building uh, networks everywhere for every school in the world is probably not something that the I, uh, United Nations has the capital or the uh, construction ability to do. Um, I'm still a bit foggy on how this relates to the IGF specifically. So I think maybe uh, Nena, and by the way, thank you, Nena, the very clear, comprehensive explanation of what's what's been going on. Um, could you explain how what the role of the IGF envisioned in this compact is? There are quite a number of people in the room and now I'm getting concerned being the only one speaking for a long time. The IGF, um, if you take a step back, we are 16 years in, into this um, global multi-stakeholder policy, discussion and dialogue space. That is actually what the IGF is. We, we agreed that we are not taking decisions during the IGF. We agreed that decisions, uh, agreements here are not constraining for those of us who've been around. So every year at the global level, we meet either online or offline or remotely to have discussions on some of these issues listed here. We also have IG forums at national and sub-regional levels. And so when Milton is asking, what is the link between the global digital compact and the IGF as um, an ecosystem? I will say that it's not the forum that is linked to the global compact, but the discussions we have here, the organizations that engage here. We are, I mean, the Web Foundation engages here. The Web Foundation works in connectivity. Everyone knows that, the Alliance for Affordable Internet. The Web Foundation is working in the digital corporation, the global connectivity pillar. The Web Foundation is collaborating with the Office of the Tech Envoy. The, the Web Foundation has launched something like the contract for the web, which we believe can feed into this process of a global compact. And so the, the link is that the issues that bring us to IGF are the same issue. Some of them are the, 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 the desires of the global digital compact. And if you ask me as the chief web advocate of the World Wide Web Foundation, I would say after the Tunis agenda, this is the global digital compact is the next breakthrough global agreement that we can work towards. I'm not saying we are going to achieve what we, what we tease we want to put in there, but I think it's groundbreaking in the sense that it is the one digital compact. That means there's, it's, there's a sense of agreement that is coming into this. And I do believe that all our 16 years of discussion and dialogue and engagement and exchange in this kind of forum, whether at the global, regional or national level can fit into this. And that explains why in my role at the Web Foundation, we are hoping 
to go beyond the normal discussion, uh, online collaboration and IGF um, engagement. We would like to go beyond the people who are not who are connected to the people who are unconnected and ask them what is their take on a global digital compact? What are the issues that matter under connectivity, under fragmentation, under data protection? And so our calling as the Web Foundation is to ensure that voices that have not been heard before, voices that, as we know, may not be able to connect online. Today, the IGF website is not happening as it's expected. And some voices are already disenfranchised, but there have been voices who have not been able to make it to global IGF. We would like to have face-to-face, in-country, thematic, marginalized group kind of consultations to fit into this. And I think that the IGF model in itself as a process provides great example for engaging people, for making voices heard. And Milton, you and myself, we've been here for 20 years. Um, we don't want us to continue multilateralism at the expense of multi-stakeholderism. And that is the role that this particular session should play, that we keep pushing the UN to go beyond states only to true multi-stakeholderism. And I think that is why we are here. So if you want to ask me in anticipation, should we engage? The question is, it's either we engage or we are phased out of the process. So it's a do or die matter for us. Thank you. Thanks, Nana. I think you've made a, definitely a convincing case um, uh, for engaging. Um, and it's clear that Web Foundation will be engaging and trying to shape the Global Digital Compact. Before we discuss the, how we might engage um, and what we should be saying, I wanted um, to check in and make sure that nobody has any questions. Um, but also, after everything that you said, it's really important that before we start discussing the detail, um, that we agree that it's an important discussion for us as civil society groups or um, constituencies to be involved in. If you disagree, uh, because there are so many other things we could be working on, there's so many other forums or so many other spaces, but Nena's just explained the relevance um, for for us um, and for the Web Foundation in particular and for the IGF, how we can utilize the IGF. So let me just give us a bit of breathing space in case anybody wants to come in, um, perhaps to register any discontent uh, with the proposal that we discussed, the Global Digital Compact and how we engage. Going to take silence as a no, by the way. Um, that there isn't any, and there is agreement. I'm going to take silence. Is there agreement? I think there's a hand up from okay. Siva Subraman. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Yes, uh, Sita, this is Siva Subramanian here, and uh, uh, I, 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 I want to register my agreement. Uh, I, I want to express my content with the. Uh, initiatives taken by the Secretary General, be it uh, uh, the initiative to form a high-level panel or to uh, form a core group or this uh, initiative to form a digital compact. Uh, I, it, it makes IGF uh, useful and uh, it, uh, um, it synthesizes and uh, moves the IGF deliberation to, the, to a phase of action and uh, I think it is, it, is, it is something wonderful that is happening to the IGF. Thank you. Thanks so much for that input. Does anybody else want to come in? Either from Katowice or online? Bruna, did you want to add anything? There's a hand here. Oh, thanks, yeah. Nana. Hi, this is um, Courtney Raj. I guess I would ask that, so I, I think it is important to engage in this process, but to the point about multilateralism, since um, so much policy is made at the national level that has uh, broader implications on internet governance, 
how can this process be used to uh, entice or compel uh, national governments and kind of alternative regional efforts to engage meaningfully in this process? And I raise that because as the Internet Governance Forum is going on, you have the Danish, you know, having their own Freedom Online thing. You have the Freedom Online Coalition doing their thing. You have the U.S. government doing their new, you know, uh, Summit for Democracy. So you've got like all, and they're going to create this new alliance for, for the Internet. Um, so you have all of these other initiatives, and it seems like everyone wants to own the process of the next stage uh, of Internet Governance which makes it very difficult for civil society to engage effectively because we are under-resourced. We're, you know, we can't be everywhere at once. So how do we envision trying, or do we envision trying to funnel some of these efforts into the Digital Cooperation Pact? How can we use this effectively? Thank you. Any reactions? I see Frank, you have your hand up. So I'll come to you and then if anybody has any reactions to Courtney's question, please do come in, either take the floor or use the chat. Frank? Okay. If I may. Thank, yes. thank you so much. I I want, I hope I pronounce your name. Is it Nena or Nema? I don't know. But thank you so much. You really highlighted on the I, uh, on the issue of uh, the global digital compact. But I think the biggest challenge like you've noted is the linkage between uh, the, the, the people that know about the global. Specifically, I will talk about civil society organizations here that are doing digital rights. They, they are not informed about what the global digital compact is all about. They even don't know the um, the content of that of the compact, but also and yet these are the organizations that are actually linking the IGF uh, to the most vulnerable people. So, for example, for us, we work with the refugees on issues of digital rights, online violence, uh, digital rights. But the biggest challenge is how do we bring the civil society together in Uganda? to ensure that they are aware of the global digital compact and how the, uh, how the country can be able to uh, consolidate this. Specifically, we have digital rights. Uh, we do not have like specific laws and policies on digital rights in Uganda, but we have laws that are applied across. For example, we have the computer, the computer misuse act, something, a law that is applied uh, for anyone in terms of uh, digital rights violations, online violence, but we do not have specific laws. And I feel uh, maybe you could be able to guide on how best can we, as civil society organizations in Uganda, ensure that the, digital, the global digital compact is actually domesticated within our own laws, within our own context. And we, as the civil society organizations, now that I've got an opportunity, to be part of the uh, of the IGF 2021, how do I ensure that this information directly links to the those that are most vulnerable, the refugees that we represent? Now that you mentioned that we need to bring the voices of those that are not connected into the discussion. Maybe one last thing I want to mention is that there are quite a number of organizations that are doing uh, digital rights advocacy in Uganda, but the challenge is those that are directly connected to those that are not connected, the most vulnerable, those in the rural communities, the poor women, the refugees, do, do not have access to these um, opportunities, to these advocacy opportunities. They do not have um, streams to access funding, yet these organizations can play a very critical role in advancing these discussions to the refugees, to the people in the rural communities, those that are really not connected. So if we could have the issues around the funding for these small organizations, organizations that are directly in contact with those that are most vulnerable, organizations that are working with LGBTI groups, how do we engage and how do we ensure that the discussions uh, within the Global Digital Compact are domesticated within our own laws? Thank you. Thanks so much, um, Frank, for that. 
Um, and just wanted um, to make a suggestion, having listened to your questions and points, Courtney and Frank, about how we move on. But before we do that, does anybody else want to react to the suggestion that we focus our discussion on the Global Digital Compact? Or do you want to um, disagree with that suggestion that uh, we engage? I don't see any hands or any, any reactions. Okay. Uh, Sita, I have my hand up. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought that was an old hand. Yeah, go ahead. I'll um, put my hand up too also. Is that Peter? No, that's somebody else. Okay. Um, all right, well, um, I don't know who that was, I'm afraid, but um, who just spoke? Milton, okay. Um, sorry, sorry. I, uh, Milton, Seattle, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, um, and just request to keep it quick so that we can get everyone else in. Thank you. Okay, I, I just want to quickly respond to Courtney's uh, expression that civil society faces limitation when too many things happen at uh, different places, and so what uh, we could do as a civil society is to turn the opportunity of uh, the secretary general's initiative to um, bridge some of the gaps in civil society by asking the secretary general to give due representation to civil society leaders in uh, in the core groups that uh, he is initiating and second by uh, asking uh, the core groups or uh, these initiatives to emphasize multi-stakeholder multi, multi process in all their representations or in all their efforts to bridge the IGF with uh, governments. In, in their effort, they have to emphasize multi-stakeholder process. These points we can em emphasize as a civil society uh, group uh, in, in a communication to the Secretary General. That would be more positive rather than uh, sections of um, sections of civil society summarily op opposing uh, these initiatives. Thank you. Thanks so much. And just as a point of clarity, there aren't any groups set up. Um, the pillars that Nana spoke about, the seven, um, are, are it's, it's really the beginning of the process and they are literally just headings in the common agenda paper. Uh, what I understand from having spoken to the Tech Envoys Office, who will play a role in consulting with the international community on what um, detail could go under each of those headings, what kind of recommendations, what kind of principles should underlie them on connection, protecting data, applying human rights, etc., is that that is open for discussion, how that consultation takes place. So there aren't any groups set up, just to clarify. Um, that if I'm wrong, do come in. Um, Peter, uh, Milton, and then Peter. Milton? Yeah, so um, I really think that the, my problem with the digital compact is that the agenda was set for us by a bunch of um, famous people, of course, with um, so-called high-level people, um, and of course, there was some engagement with the multi-stakeholder community, but fundamentally, that's the agenda of the, those people and not necessarily ours. Um, just to tick one example that might uh, tick people off here, um, I don't agree that the regulation of AI uh, is a high priority. I think that people who talk about the regulation of AI typically don't know what they're talking about and uh, don't know what they want to do. Uh, and um, whatever we want to do about AI's penetration of society, uh, regulation by governments is probably not it. Uh, but that's just one example of various ways in which, you know, it's nice that um, many important people in the world got together and agreed on an agenda. But I think the, the great thing about the IGF is that the people, the civil society people in it, um, can set their own agenda and their own priorities and work on them uh, independently. So I don't feel particularly required to fall in line behind the, the Secretary General's agenda. Um, and in particular, I, I still don't see any reason to support this um, leadership panel that has sort of been called into question. Uh, again, it's probably going to happen anyway, but um, I don't feel particularly 
great about it. Um, I think that uh, it's another example of how it will become easier and easier for a small group of people to develop an agenda that we're expected to fall in line behind, but we haven't really uh, generated organically and support on our own. Thank you. Thanks so much, Milton. Peter? Thanks. Um, yeah, I, uh, I do try to support um, a number of the Secretary General's initiatives. Uh, and we have, uh, since the digital cooperation work started, um, namely by being co-champions of one of the round tables that was taking forth you know, the human rights recommendations in that roadmap, uh, along with many of the folks on this call. Um, we've also engaged a lot with the Tech Envoys Office. And so what I'm worried about is, is um, you know, them kind of, kind of continually, it seems like almost every year, creating these new initiatives that um, get spun off and then gradually peter out. You know, it goes from like, the development stage to the um, deprecation stage very quickly. Um, the Tech Envoys Office, you know, being one example. So uh, I would, I'm not against um, engaging with this, and I think uh, you know it looks decent from the, from the overview. But uh, I would ask, I would really press them to say, like, well, you've created, you've already created these structures around the roadmap, taking that forward. Um, how are those building into this common agenda? And why don't you, um, you know, provide those with the necessary resources? Because frankly, those are fallen on, you know, uh, whoever wants to pick it up and run with it, uh, because you know, the UN has really seemingly moved on from these priorities. So, um, yeah, I would, and then one of that, I mean, we should be engaged from the start in the development of these things. Um, that's not always the case. So. Yeah, I'm not against engaging, but I would really press them uh, to open up access and to show us to prove how this is going to build and not simply just distract from the previous initiatives. Thanks, Peter. So I haven't heard anyone um, completely disagree or, or suggest that we focus on something else entirely, but a number of concerns and questions around it. Um, and so apart, hopefully I'm not misrepresenting what you said, Milton, because I do register a sense of, is this, um, is this really uh, something that we should be engaging with? I would ask us to put aside the leadership panel discussion here for the next um, 30 or so minutes that we have and focus on this aspect of what the SG has suggested or put on the table, which is the Global Digital Compact. Um, because we could talk also about the leadership panel, um, but the agenda that we have here is about the Global Digital Compact and it's separate. So what I, what I would say is that every, and everyone who has spoken and, and those who haven't spoken, um, for, uh, presumably don't have strong views um, or don't want to register any discontent with, um, the, with civil society or us um, engaging in some way with the Global Digital Compact. But I, have, I do think there were a number of questions around how we make sure that other processes, including national level initiatives, like whether it's a Danish tech summit or many, many others are linked in, um, how we ensure that it's not just uh, something that will peter out, like you said, um, Peter, and that is actually something worth engaging in. Um, and there were some recommendations in providing existing spaces with proper resources, how we engage with vulnerable communities. All of these, I think, are areas where the Tech Envoys Office will be looking for recommendations on how they do that. Um, and I think we have a lot to offer there. Um, so if we agree in general that engaging in this is something that we should do, um, even if the top if the setting of the agenda came from the SG after the process um, that we've just heard about from the high level panel until today, then I think what we could do is um, put forward some suggestions on how the consultation happens, how engagement with different communities happens, how we make sure that the duplication or all the existing initiatives that exist are taken into account properly, um, how we make sure that it's actually effective um, and doesn't just, um, uh, become uh, something else uh, that could be a waste of time, like I think you were suggesting it might be. And we we suggest ways that it could it could be um, it could be done properly the consultation. 
And then under the seven pillars, we could suggest what needs to be considered. So when connecting all people to the internet, what needs to be considered when protecting data, et cetera. Um, and in order to link in with the how and making sure that we, uh, to Courtney's point, that we don't um, duplicate or that we don't stretch resources too much, we actually um, map the existing forums and spaces and actors, um, or we, we at least list those that we know are relevant and we think that should be consulted and be part of the consultation under each of the areas. So if you are looking at the um, doc that Bruna shared, I've suggested that those are the two kind of main areas that we look at the how, the consultation, how it should be done, um, and the what. Um, so under each of the seven areas, we, um, we consider what should be priorities um, and perhaps include existing forums. Nana, you have your hand up, so I'm just going to come to you now. I do. Um, so because I've worked, I've followed the digital cooperation itself for the past, from the day zero, if there's anything like that, I was anticipating uh, that as civil society, we can organize ourselves, not just from civil society. It's a good thing Frank is there. Uh, we've got people from IGF. We've got people from global digital rights. Uh, we've got other people in the data and open data. I think we also have some people working on um, uh, privacy, other people working on access and connectivity, others working on fragmentation, and, and more even working on AI. Uh, so my, my, my one of the how is that we could have organizations who have capacity or have resources, either person or financial. I happen to be one of those who've, um, who've been lucky uh, that I have 30% of my work plan for 2022 dedicated to UN and digital cooperation. And that explains why I'm here and putting some energy. But I'm cognizant of the fact that not all of our organizations can put apart 30% of a director's time to do boring UN stuff, because I don't know anything exciting that comes out of the UN. Um, you sleep, you wake up, it's the same thing, right? Um, sorry, captors, that's the truth anyhow. So the thing is, who else is willing, may have interest, resources, or capacity, to engage. That's one thing. So we need one or two other organizations. Like I have said, Web Foundation it has this in 2022 plan. But please note that digital corporate, the, the digital compact can only, will only be launched in two years time. So it's a long haul in policy engagement. Um, I have reserved a room on Thursday at 11 o'clock is room 11. Uh, if you are around, I'm happy to meet up here while we're here on Thursday at 11 o'clock in room 11. But if you are not, my, my name, my surname is my email address, nenna at webfoundation.org. It's also my Twitter um, handle. I'm happy to, to link up and know who can do what. I do not promise that the Web Foundation can lead in everything because it is only me. I don't have an assistant working on this and it's only 30% of my time. And that 30% is all of you and not just digital compact alone. And I think that uh, the IGF ecosystem is one good place where we can find organizations who may be willing to engage in this. So that is what the who. So the who I can engage web foundation because that is work that I've already planned. Now the how, I think that, like you said, we can map existing um, convenings initiatives, but still we need to move away from the normal, um, the, the regular folks, the people who've been here, and we need to move into new areas who have not been engaged, who have not been contacted, who have been kind of either marginalized or disenfranchised, and that is where my heart is at the moment. I'm still consulting. If you're an organization, you'd want to co-host and a, a consultation, please, uh, I'm happy to work with you. The last thing, and I will shut up, is that 
we need to send a strong message to the office of the UN Tech Envoy, whether it's a principal, whether it's an officer in charge, I don't care. Even if it goes away from the office of the Tech Envoy, I still don't care. But what I care about is that global voices, civil society voices need to be heard, recorded, considered in this, and that multilateralism will not be the case, but multi-stakeholderism will be. It has not been the, the, the life of the UN to always consider civil society at the same level with states. And that is why the IGF, it's a groundbreaking initiative. And I think someone said it only takes one crisis for, for all the gains as activists we have made in broadening the civil space to be lost. It only takes one single crisis for us to lose it. And this pandemic, may actually be the crisis that will close up the UN from where it has been opening up. And that is why this common agenda, which is the development relaunch plan of the UN needs more civil society engagement. Even if you are not an IGF oriented civil society, please, if you know other people, either those who are engaging in the UN um, uh, democracy summit or those who are in freedom online coalition or those who are in the AI arena, please let them know that this is a, an unprecedented opportunity for us to put digital issues and get people to, to engage with them and agree to them. It's a compact. It's the first time that the word digital and compact are coming together in the UN since Tunis 2005. That's 16 years ago. Let's be aware that this once again is a groundbreaking moment. It's gonna take two years, but if we're still here, we can play our parts and those who come after us will take it up. I'm done. Thanks, Nana. Um, Bruna, over to you. Thanks, Chital. And just to maybe just to follow up on some of the things Nana said about engagement and everything else, I do think that um, some of our engagement, like not just some, but a huge part of our previous engagement with the Tech Envoy Office and the UN and a lot of the things we did um, in this past year and year and a half on this topic were always about like um, inquiring for more um, clearer results and for more consultation to us. And that was like, not just to us, but for more like open consultation, multi-stakeholder consultations about any possible and, and, and future outcomes of um, the, the developments of the, the, the digital cooperation discussions and so on. And, and this was one that didn't really fall within whatever we asked. So um, maybe um, there's also like, I don't know, I, I agree with Nina, maybe we need to go off of the, the usual suspects kind of like beaten path of people we have been engaging with and talking to in the past, the past days. But, um, but maybe there is also the time for a second and a newer um, statement from civil society on this, just saying, just re-emphasizing some of the, the things we asked for in the past years and then saying that if we really wanna move forward and, and if, if it's really about pandemic recovery, th then it has to be something that's inclusive and not just like a, a unilateral initiative or like um, more developed by the UN than anyone else because in the end of the day, we're all in this together. So yeah, I just wanted to bring this, these things about the engagement and, and transparency that we spoke so much about in the past year. Great, thanks, Bruna. I wonder if that, I mean, I, I suggested a kind of structure or way of thinking around how we could potentially provide some input if, if we do want to work on this. And that would be, as I put in the chat, um, a two kind of main ways of, of inputting, one on the how, so essentially telling, I mean, whether they listen to it or not, but they have asked for this, by the way, um, telling the Tech Envoy's office to do its consultation in this way. Uh, already we heard they need to consider existing forums and spaces, including national initiatives, engaging new vulnerable um, rural communities and, and give some ways of how to do that. Um, and we already also heard that we need to bring in or consult or build on the existing roundtable. So we can put that all under how, and that could be a statement um, that could be shaped into a statement on the digital compact. And then the second would be more substantive. So what, and I think Nana, you were asking for input on like capacity and who can actually help shape those different um, substantive 
inputs under the seven pillars. So what should we be saying on Black human rights online? And where is that discussion already happening in the Rights Council, for example? What should we be saying under meaningful access? Where is that discussion already happening, et cetera? And provide that um, or start to work on something like that. Um, so that would be a, that could be something we do. Uh, if there's anyone interested, um, well, first of all, I guess it's more important for me to see whether that's an idea that people find interesting or useful. I only see Bruna nodding and I know there are other people around, <laughs> but uh, you might be shaking your head. Uh, you might be wondering what, what am I even saying? But anyway, um, what do people think about that approach or does anyone have any other suggestions on how we engage with the global digital compact? If I may, Shital, mm -hmm. there is not any clear document so far up until yesterday evening that said that that global digital compact is clearly in the mandate of the UN tech involved. Just so you know, we hope it will be, but it's not clear. So if we are making a statement, uh, uh, I think that our statement might be on the, first of all, our desire to engage as civil society. Uh, secondly, on how we want to engage. And maybe thirdly, on how we want to keep engaged. But I don't think that our, our, our if we are writing a letter, that it should be, uh, the destination is not the UN Tech Invoice Office. The destination is the office the executive office of the UN Secretary General, because anyhow, this the whoever will handle that piece of work will be reporting to the SG's office. So just so mm -hmm. we know, we are mm -hmm. not targeting the the Tech Invoice Office. We're targeting the office of the executive the executive office of the UN Secretary General because he's the Correct. one ultimately who will do the report on during anger even if we walk through the tech envoy or not. So uh, it's, it's important, we, we, email, we write the uh, Guterres and copy Spatolisano, if you understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, okay, um, okay, noted. Um, so, but I think the general question was also just to make sure that everyone here or, or a significant number of us here are interested in that. I think in terms of the, um, the time frame, Bruni asked a question about waiting until the tech envoy is appointed. I think from what I've heard, and this is rumors, but from what I've heard, it, it is going to be quite soon. So we could do, um, I mean, sometime the next few weeks or at least around January. So we could be um, prepared to send something um, and start working on that, the how, the statement, um, in the next few weeks uh, so that we're ready to send it. Perhaps that is one of the options, considering what we know. Anyone else? There's a hand up Anderson. here. Yes, Courtney. Thanks. Just a, a quick suggestion is to request a meeting uh, with the tech envoy as part of their onboarding process, or at least once they're onboarded into the process to have a meeting with civil society in addition to just sending a letter. That's a great suggestion. We can we note that. May, may I once again? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Sorry, okay. I think I should start keeping quiet now. I'm on the main session on digital cooperation, uh, which is happening after tomorrow. I think there is an open session on digital cooperation as well. And uh, so let's, let's use all of the available um, opportunities. So while we are here, um, I think Milton and my, Milton, you're on that panel still? Okay, so what are the key messages? I think we have about 20 minutes remaining. What are the key messages we should take from the civil society to that panel in, so that we have it on record that we had a meeting today and then on Thursday, we'll put, that, put it down on record uh, so that when I speak there, someone will not be like, oh, is that woman, she's speaking for herself. I will know that I am bearing voices of the people that met today because the, the officer in charge will be there and we would have it, it's a main session, would like to have it on record that we are asking for ABC towards XYZ 
right? So that when finally she also will be covered, then when we ask for a meeting, we'll be like, yeah, we are following up from what we told you that we had the meeting and we're looking forward. Let me stop there. Thanks, and uh, anyone else want to come in? Yeah, I just, no. uh, I do. Peter, well, Peter, and then Milton. Um, okay, Peter, go ahead. I mean, we wrote a letter a year ago trying to warn them that the process for nominating an envoy needed to be more transparent and they ignored us. I wanted us to re-up that letter now. So no, I don't feel comfortable just writing to the new tech envoy asking for a meeting. Like I want us to be on record right now saying you failed last time and it blew back in your face and you know, you need to bring us in this time. I agree not. I mean, it makes so much more sense now that if the secretary general wanted some treaty like process, he would have had, you know, put Fabrizio in charge of shepherding it. So I, I do think they envision the tech envoy having a big role in this compact, but from what we've seen that that office is not funded well and it's obviously is in some disarray. So I don't see them having the legitimacy right now to lead this like treaty like process. Um, I think, yeah, next few weeks, I don't want to put anything new on our docket, but I don't know the time frame for this, so if that's necessary, that's fine. I'm just saying, I think if we, we should write to the Secretary General, make it public and say, make these points about the tech envoy uh, process, not giving us much um, confidence in, you know, the Secretary General's commitment to multi-stakeholder internet governance. And uh, and that is kind of the launch point to demand a bigger role in any of this compact business. Great, thanks, Peter. I think that was clear. If anybody has any reactions to that or wants to speak, please do um, put up your hand. But Milton, next. Well, when you talk about demanding a bigger role, um, I would like that to be more specific. If particularly if um, I'm not sure I'm comfortable with the idea that I have to go into a panel that I was invited to as a uh, bound to some collective position developed uh, by the IGC. Uh, I don't think I was invited to be on that panel because I speak for civil society. I think it's because I have some expertise in global governance, uh, particularly as it regards uh, information communication technologies. And uh, there's a, a very, very broad set of topics on that panel. Um, so I, you know, the idea that I have to adhere to some party line uh, doesn't doesn't appeal to me. Okay, so so I will say whatever the hell I want on that panel. Let me just put it that way. That's nice, simple. Uh, but if we do actually agree on some main points that we want to make, I'll be happy to echo those points and reinforce them. So let's let's put it that way. And in regards to what Peter said, if, you know, I, I do agree that the tech envoy role is problematic, but if we want to demand a bigger role in something, I want to know what, what that role is. I mean, could we be more specific about that? Yeah, I see two things. Um, one is, well, first of all, Milton, please do say whatever you want, of course. Um, um, I, do, I, I don't know what, uh, whether Nana meant anything different, but I certainly didn't understand anything different from that. But if, if we are, there are two things. I think there is that session on Thursday where if we are able to come up with two or three points, particularly on the need for transparency and more participative process and the, the Tech Envoy's office um, being more transparent and, and some key asks, then we can, if we can put that together before Thursday, then, and if you could echo that and others there could echo that, that could be very useful for getting this message across if we all agree. And then second is the broader role, broader discussion, what role should be played, da, 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 da. That I think we need to continue to discuss. But there's a shorter term time frame to the Thursday meeting, um, and then there's a longer term one. If we can come up with something short and snappy, some really uh, top level points that we can agree on, um, which Peter has suggested something around for Thursday, then we can coordinate that online by the list. Um, and hopefully that will be helpful for those participating. Let me just have a look. Larry, you said you had just joined. Well, welcome. Yes. Hopefully everything's making sense. Peter, um, I'm sorry, Bruna, go ahead. 
No, just to highlight some of the things on the chat as well. I think there were a lot of concerns around transparency uh, mostly. So reinforcing the call for transparency around the, these processes as Valeria highlighted and also Jim um, brought up the point of the lack of transparency around the Office of the Tech Envoy as another concerning, um, another pain point of this discussion as well. So there might be here a consensus around how we want to um, highlight the lack of transparency around everything um, regarding this discussion. So yeah, just to, to echo what's been posted on the chat. Great, okay. Um, oh yeah, sorry, I missed that, Valeria. Um, does anybody else want to come in on this? So we're, we're talking about uh, a message really to the UN and to the SG um, about uh, the process so far. Um, specifically on the tech envoy, we have some potential messages that we'd have to craft um, by an like, online discussion, but they would really focus on transparency. Um, and then we could also reiterate that we are um, committed to engaging in a, in a process that is meaningfully transparent and inclusive, perhaps. Um, so that is where we've got so far, um, but then we need to further discuss, and for those who are interested in engaging with the Global Digital Compact, um, discuss providing a more substantive input on the how. Um, and so that is something that we can also discuss afterwards. But in the meantime, does anybody want to, I, I tried to do a stock take there of where we are, but does anybody want to add anything to that um, and perhaps suggest more messages for Thursday that we might agree on some more specificity around the transparency point perhaps? Um, yeah, I, I want to suggest that, uh, one minute. <laughs> In, in parts of the civil society, some dissent was expressed on the idea of uh, uh, even of the tech envoy and on the high level committee. And in the communication by the civil society, in the formal communication, uh, we could also summarize uh, the minority opinion in a, in, in, in a smooth language and also indicate that uh, such uh, uh, opinions uh, in appropriate language uh, uh, does not uh, purport to represent the views of the Internet Governance Caucus of the Civil Society. And uh, that would be a little polite on our part to do that. Thanks. Thanks, Shiva. I think what we can definitely do is engage with each other via the list and see what we can come up with um, in terms of those top points about transparency and what we might want to say uh, at the Thursday meeting. And that could also provide a good basis for crafting something more detailed around how we engage or how we want to engage, how we suggest um, engagement is done with civil society on the Global Digital Compact. But certainly if you want to be part of the drafting of that, those points, you can do that online. Um, can I start with somebody? Yes, okay, so we've got 10 more minutes. Um, does anybody want to suggest anything else? Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I would just say, yeah, also, along with the process points, it'd be good to, you know, ensure that uh, human rights are, uh, the center of this process and the, you know, the OHCHR um, has, plays a big role, uh, you know, especially with their new initiatives like BTEC and um, others. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Peter. So, so far what I've heard, and this is only the beginning of drafting, so I know it needs to be done before Thursday, um, but something, some few points that could be taken um, forward. And again, this is just uh, ideas that have been floated here, but we need to um, work on them more online is the uh, um, concern around how the Tech Envoy's office, uh, the Tech Envoy's um, appointment 
so far has been carried out and the need for greater transparency, perhaps pointing out um, that a lack of transparency um, and involvement before uh, was um, uh, what did have an impact um, that uh, led to the office perhaps not having as much trust and, and engagement as it could, and that it's there's need for more clarity and transparency in the tech employees office's role in this. Um, the, um, the need to engage with like the OHCHR and other human rights um, uh, actors or stakeholders. And um, I think, yes, that key point around ensuring that we, that, that there is improvement in, in the transparency and participation um, in, in any post future process on the global digital compact could be, um, could be helpful. So those are what I, I drew out of the discussion so far. Um, does anybody wanna add anything to that? Mm -hmm. The need for more support perhaps, like actually matching um, requirements with funding so that the office can do a meaningfully inclusive, a role of being meaningfully inclusive. So, that's something else, adequate funding. Okay. Shital and everyone, just one more point, if possible. I, I, my understanding about the concerns in relation to also the IGF leadership panel, the process around it, uh, is that uh, we are all um, unaware of what the timeline is and also how the, U, the office of the UN Secretary General sees the, the linkages no, between that process and the other ones happening. So perhaps uh, a brief mention to, to that could be also uh, good to include or to consider. Great point. Yes, so, so more clarity and uh, transparency on, on that. Uh, we can definitely one, one ask for that. Nana? Mm -hmm. I just said here that the Global Digital Compact will be submitted by Anga 78, that is September 2023. So I will repeat that again. September 2023 is, is the date, is the timeline by which the Global Digital Compact will be finalized and sent to UN General Assembly. So it is expected that that General Assembly will adopt that compact. And that gives us a uh, two years that is beginning um, maybe one year, nine months, if I may say. So if we really want to do anything as civil society, we're looking at doing it next year and at the most by June next year, uh, by June, 2023. And that gives us enough time to engage. So on the timeline, please note that it is by September, 2023. Thank you. So that's right. That's also right in the middle of the WISIS um, plus 20 process. Interesting. Uh, that would be UN General Assembly 78. Yeah. Isn't the plus 20 in 2025? I thought it was going to be a two year process. Oh, it will start then. Oh, sorry. Okay. I understand. That's really important. Yeah, that's key to. Um, to note, and I'm sure there um, there will be uh, quite a lot we can say about about that. Um, okay, thanks for that. So, um, Bruna, did you want to add anything at this point? We have five minutes left. No, nothing, nothing so far. Okay. So um, what uh, it seems we've agreed on is that it might it would be useful to have um, some key points that we want to share with the digital cooperation session at, um, at the, well, at KTVJ or yeah, here um, on Thursday, but we have some points already that need uh, Apologies, defining. Shito. Yeah. The, the digital cooperation main session is the day after tomorrow, which is Wednesday. Oh, you said, okay, okay. I thought you said Thursday, sorry. Yeah. It so, is the, it's the bilaterals that I'm holding with organizations who uh, are willing, that is on okay. Thursday, yes. 
Okay, so if we can work today and tomorrow on some of those key points and, and share them with you and share them with everyone else who's going to be there, um, then we will do our best to do that um, by Wednesday. And then looking forward, we have um, a general commitment, it seems to uh, drafting some kind of letter on the how of civil society engagement to the Secretary General. Um, we reinforce some of these points uh, that we've already made. And then um, there's some, some interest in engaging substantively in the development of it, which will be a time frame from now to 2023 in, in terms of the, the pillars and, and what uh, we could offer and say under each of those. So we can summarize this, Bruno and I, and share notes and, and kickstart that process for putting together some of those points ahead of Wednesday, because that's useful for the um, session. And, um, and we will be using Valeria, the same Google Doc um, Bruna suggested, but we'll be sharing on the list. Uh, and we can cope, we can post to the another list as well, and that has been engaged, which is um, the digital cooperation list that I think Web Foundation manages. So we can make sure there's many people as possible who want to be involved in this are, are involved. Um, but we'll use this Google Doc, I'll post it again in the chat and the list to coordinate input. Oh, Bruno, you've just put it there, thanks. Yep, Shiva, it's in the chat. So do have a look there. I'm sorry the notes are super messy at the moment, but they will be less messy. Um, and then we can um, start putting together the key points for Wednesday. Uh, and that is, where we are, we've still got a few minutes, um, but I'm sure you all have many things to do. Does anybody want to offer any last few reflections or points or ask any questions? Hmm. Okay. Well, I would, um, mm -hmm. if we're gonna be pushing for like more open processes, like maybe we should uh, bring the private sector along too. You know, I think they've been helpful and pushing for more openness and some UN processes um, like the OEWG. So that's a thought. And I'm sorry, I'm not there with you all this week. Yes, that joint letter could be, depending on how it takes shape um, on the how, it could be very much open to private sector if others agree. We can chat about that perhaps later, but that's been noted, Peter, as an idea. And I know that, um, it could be helpful to bring them on board. So thanks for making that suggestion. Also, sorry, they can't be there with you all. Um, I'm jealous as well <laughs> of uh, those who are actually in Katowice. Um, anyone else before um, we wrap? Just one last thing. Um, Siva asked us to help summarize some of the links about the digital compact. I started on the same like document that we're taking notes about the meeting. So. There is the link to the common agenda in the resolution you sent. So if anyone else has any other relevant documents that just feel free to add them to the Google Doc and then we'll be fine. Okay, thank you. Um, great, does anyone have any other points or questions before we end? Okay. Well, we'll be um, in touch and please do look out by, um, by email for uh, the latest information on, on drafting these points ahead of Wednesday and more generally. Um, and do get involved if you're interested in, in the drafting um, as well. And enjoy the rest of your day and have a great IGF. I'm sure uh, we'll see you, uh, we'll see each other around in various sessions. Um, so if you have anything that you'd like to share with the IGC list, any sessions you're facilitating or organizing, please do feel free to share that information via the list. And we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Yes.